What's up Cosmonauts? Chang on Chain here from Interchain FM. I just received a question from Twitter asking me to explain the intricacies and the technical details of Prop 69. If y'all are not familiar with Prop 69, it is currently open governance proposal on the Cosmos Hub that seeks to approve the deployment of Cosmwasm onto the Cosmos Hub. Now, the question on Twitter is by Kavaskus. He says, I admit that I changed my vote to no for Prop 69 because the most simplistic argument was to keep Adam simple. However, one thing I'd ask a proponent of Prop 69 is if Cosmosm helps interchain accounts, shared security, or IBC routing in any way. And Echoverse tags me and asks, that's also what I'm wondering. Not everyone in the space has cosmic brains, pun intended. Can we please have a podcast or a video? So Echoverse... This is your video. The short answer is Cosmosm is not a prerequisite for interchain accounts or IBC routing in any way, but it does have implications to shared security. For those who are proponents of passing Prop 69, that means they want Cosmosm to be running on the Cosmos Hub. So what that would do is allow smart contracts to run on the Cosmos Hub. And the thinking with that is they want to fold in greater utility into the Atom outside of just staking. That would change the landscape of the Cosmos Hub, turning it into a generalized smart contracting layer one that's similar to Ethereum, except that it is governance gated and so that would change the game to one such that atom holders are now going to be voting frequently on every smart contract that wants to deploy itself on the cosmos hub well what's the flip side to that what's what's the risk of that the flip side to that is that it changes the game theory of the atom token it can possibly introduce people who are financially motivated to deploy an app on the hub and buy up a lot of atom in the secondary market to then increase their voting power so that they could vote in favor of their dap and then potentially pass their application so that it gets hosted on the hub so people who vote no and are anti cosmosm on the hub are voting for this you're implicitly saying that the utility of the atom should stick to being that of the ibc ecosystems de facto security token. So what you're buying into is the idea that the future roadmap of the Cosmos Hub should stay relatively conservative and that the Atom should do one thing and one thing well. And that one thing is to act as the interchain security token for the entire ecosystem of Cosmos. What that means is you care about interchain security. And what is interchain security? Interchain security is just a cute buzzword for saying that the Atom can be used to lend security to a new app chain in the future. What that means is if a new chain emerges, call that Foo Chain, and it wants to bootstrap security without bootstrapping itself with a new validator set, um, what, it, what it can do instead is borrow security from the Atom token and allow its chain to be secured by Atom. How does it do that? So if something bad happens on Foo Chain, and let's say the validators of Foo Chain double sign, then that message gets relayed to the Cosmos Hub. The Cosmos Hub realizes what happens. And it slashes the Atom on the Cosmos Hub that is delegated to that particular validator, and that's how interchain security is going to be implemented. So people who vote no are saying that the Atom should only do one thing, and that one thing is to be the interchain security token. What's the means to that end? The means to that end is to make sure that the Cosmos Hub is as conservative and simple as possible and that it doesn't become a layer one for generalized smart contracts. All it does is to act effectively as the layer zero for the entire interchain ecosystem and for the Atom to then lend itself to securing other blockchains. And the Atom cannot be the most reliable token for doing so if the Cosmos Hub blockchain can potentially be compromised either through the attack vector that we talked about, the economic attack vector that we talked about earlier, 
or through introducing an exploitable bug in Cosmwasm that is undetected until it is exploited in production. But that being said, what's the benefit of Cosmwasm? Cosmwasm is extremely useful. If you want to make changes at the app level without touching anything on the consensus or peer-to-peer -peer levels. So what happens is if if you want to make some sort of change, um, you could upgrade this you could upgrade the Cosmosm smart contract and not have to undergo an entire chain upgrade. So think of it this way. If you deploy a smart contract on Ethereum, you can upgrade your smart contract without getting everyone to upgrade the entire Ethereum blockchain as it is, which amounts to huge coordination overhead and extremely high costs for everyone else who has is, who is launched a, a dApp on Ethereum. So what that looks like in practice, basically ETH1 migrating to ETH2, that it, it's that level of coordination to do a chain upgrade. What Cosmwasm is so good at is allowing the governance of a chain to add or change features on the smart contracting level without coordinating everyone to do a chain upgrade. That's it, that's the gist of it. I hope this helps you understand what is at stake in Prop 69. May you be well informed of your governance decisions and may the force be with you.